zero. Okay, hopefully that fixes some things. And also wasn't recorded at all, because that would make me worry about a couple of uh, factors I have to look into. Anyway, welcome to the next part of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Alternative. I'm Morning Day U. And I think we'll continue the story now, because I kind of need to get on with it. I don't want the Monty Python mob to come after me. And we're out to 150 points. I think that's a good point to continue. Also, I didn't address this in the last part because I'm not sure if it actually is any different, but if I sound a slight bit different, my nose is stuffed, uh, is stuffed up, and I have no clue why. Okay, we got another Thunder Wave cave job. Uh, let's deposit all our extraneous items into the Kangaskhan store. I'll uh, I'll keep an apple because I think at this point I need two. Plus, if I've been saving them up, yep. I'm going to take a couple of these with me. Uh, that's four. I think I need five. And there's a reason for this. So, we know that Diglett was kidnapped by Skarmory. Skarmory is a flying steel type Pokemon. Very bad news. Especially for us, as a grass type Pokemon. For our companion, not as much of an issue. The only problem is they can't really hit them with a weakness because flying and gr uh, don't really mix. But uh, the main thing that it will always confuse me, sometimes you can hit flying type Pokemon with ground type moves and other times you can't. It's a bit wishy-washy. Anyway, off to Mount Steel. I have to get back into voice work again. Hey, I had yesterday to kind of rest up, so should be fine. Here we are, Mount Steel. So Diglett was whisked to its peak? That's right. I forgot Doug Trio's voice entirely. Actually, I'm just going to do what I did with Butterfree and not do a voice at all. Just because I'm not sure if we'll ever see them again. And because I really don't want to figure out voices for, like, side, main, story char- You know, the main arc characters. We've, we've essentially gone through a couple of small arcs. The peak is 9F. Thank you for helping. Farewell. Uh, let's go. I hope I'm getting the voice right. Uh, yeah. I should I should be fine with it. But now we have more ground type Pokemon appearing. So I'm very happy to be Trico at this time because we just go on through and uh, deal with problems the only way we know how. Absorb their life energy into ourselves so that then we may live longer. Plus, if I'm correct, I have many more uses of Absorb than uh, Mud Slap. Uh, yes, by two. <laughs> So that's two more Pokemon I can take care of before I run out. But I'm going to use it mostly for... ground-type Pokemon. Oh, you see how they 
stayed there for a while, if we had the friend area for them, they would have joined us. I'll go into more on what the friend areas are and how you recruit Pokemon. Uh, once that actually is addressed. Because right now I'm kind of uh, spoiling the future a bit. And it's a bit difficult to not do that. Uh, almost used Absorb. Well, everything's active now. Now you use Water Gun. Which you should have done in the first place. Oh. Hmm. That failed. Yeah, still, still need to check on that help. Uh, on the whole hit rate thing. Because seriously, that is some confusing stuff to try and figure out. Alright. So. Uh, we're going to give this white gummy to Kippers. And then... Going over to Kippers, we use the item. It's a bit of a roundabout way, but this gives them enough IQ that... Well, now they have a PowerPoint checker. So I can take the time to check this out. So basically, they'll stop using a move if it has no uses left. Yeah, the AI having that is amazing. Just because then... Uh, they don't waste their time using a move that they can't use. I mean, they'll still use a move if they see it as the most effective. But it, it's again hit or miss whether or not they'll actually use a move or just go, Oh yeah, I'll just normally attack because that's fine. I wonder if Absorb gives me a bit of... Uh, stomach content. Because that would be interesting. But also make it so that I could be long... Uh, I could take my time and go a bit longer into dungeon exploring. Oh, we learned quick attack. That's awesome. Now we have a ranged attack on our side. So Kibbers didn't have one. And probably won't have one for a while. But, for us... Uh, we're in luck. So I go to moves. And, yeah. So, info. Bow up to two tiles ahead. And it flicks damage on a target up to two tiles ahead. It's a normal type move. It uses our strength. And, yep. Does exactly what it says on the 10. But this means we have much more option for what we can do. Like with this, it gives us that advantage of we get to attack twice before they can attack once. Sort of. I mean, if they have a move that is the same range, then it's just a case of, like, Archer v. Archer and Fire Emblem. It's just going to be this... Uh, both sides can attack each other, but moving right next to each other kind of changes something. Actually, Fire Emblem was a terrible uh, example. At least with archers. Unless you have an archer with the ability to attack from point-blank range. I don't know much about Fire Emblem. It is not my forte. Uh, my specialty gaming category is more in line with uh, dungeon crawlers. Etrian Odyssey and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Uh, toss in just a couple of other uh, RPGs. Uh, yeah, I had to move forward because if they didn't, I would have to. And now I can do this and that should be, yep, an instant knockout. I'm enjoying playing a Pokemon other than 
like box standard you are water type because i've been i've been saddled with water type for this for ages and the thing is i like playing grass type pokemon for mystery dungeon games except for explorers explorers is special because that gives you the option of being an electric type Pokemon uh, without being Pikachu. The only electric type Pokemon you can be in this game. But also, this game had an interesting uh, fact with it. So, yeah, based on what Pokemon you get from the quiz, uh, you have a limited selection of partners. And certain Pokemon couldn't be partners. And those were ones that were meant to be the main character for this. Like, main player character, I should... I should specify. So, it was Pikachu, Cubone, Meowth... Uh, Skitty, I believe, is in there. And, yeah. Just... You had a... You had a fair number of Pokémon that you may never see somebody play unless they really focus on it. Also, I figured out how to, uh... I'll say game the system, but what I actually mean is I understand how, uh... the game decides what Pokemon to give you. So, in the quiz, each answer gives points to a certain thing. Some give, like, a single point to multiple personality types or a bunch of points to a single personality type and how it decides what Pokemon you get is based on did you reach the associated number of points by the time the quiz ends and it's more a case of okay so you got like 10 points into this thing, but you got 15 into this. So you're obviously this Pokemon. Because of the points you got. Oh, come on, Kippers. You have Water Gun. This is, this is where the AI just kind of kills me. You have the power to just take them out in one shot. Why don't you use it? Save yourself the damage you just took. Like, the player will see that as an advantage. The AI may see it as... Oh, I need to save up for when we get further in. That would be a thing I'd have to check into how the AI works for the partner. And this is the type of stuff I geek out about because I just enjoy learning how things work. Like with the quiz, I was so happy to have learned how the quiz worked. It put it into perspective how I could then kind of use that against it. Well, at the same time, not. I just now have a better understanding of it. If I memorized what every answer gave, then I could properly like, control the outcome. And in certain cases, that's not a bad thing. Like, say, okay, I want to go through Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team again as, like, a performance piece this time around. So, I'm going to focus on... Uh... Like, writing up an alternative script, covering up... The text when it happens with editing, and then... Uh... Choosing what Pokémon would best fit the protag. Or choose that before writing, so that then it's easier. It's one of those things that can help give you more options. I'm going to go back to uh, the game because we're at the end of the dungeon. Though, so, story stuff is happening now. Look, morning. 
Diglett's over there. Hey, are you all right? We've come to rescue you. I, I'm scared. Going to try something different for Diglett than what I did originally. Because it was just a bit too close to the partner character. Okay, Skarmory. You! What do you think you're doing here? We're here to rescue Diglett. Skarmory, don't do this! Release Diglett! How dare you! It's their fault! I haven't slept in days because the earthquakes frightened me so. Every night we've had them. Those earthquakes are caused by this brat's ilk running wild underground. That's not true. Well, it's true that there have been earthquakes lately, but how in the hell could an entire family of diglets going wild underground cause that many? I mean, think. Please, think. You be quiet with your logic and reason. We'll fight if you keep that up. It's no good. Skarmory's too agitated to listen to reason, especially when I had a well laid out argument. I mean, if, if this was a... If this was a situation where we were in a courtroom, I might be able to provide some evidence that I found during a crime scene investigation, which I wasn't supposed to because that's tampering. But maybe... Maybe we just have to fight him. Actually, no, we'll have to fight it out. This is why I bring Blast Seeds. Skarmory is an interesting uh, Pokemon to go up against. Because with uh, the Blast Seeds and your partner, uh, by throwing... If I didn't just place the Blast Seed... If I'm correct... Yeah, there we go. There was a Blast Seed's worth of damage from the partner, and generally with about four or five Blast Seeds, you can take Skarmory out very quickly. Grrr. I can't keep up. Play for now. Slightly lost a voice there. It, it, it hurts a bit to do that kind of voice. But I don't mind it. It's actually one of my favorite voices to produce. <laughs> Just because it always surprises at least somebody. Just because uh, I can I can easily go into it without any sort of problems. Hey there, we chased Skarmory off. It's okay now. Come down over here. I can't. I'm too scared to move. Okay, no problem. I'll come to you. Just wait. Uh, okay. No. Nope, that. Look at this cliff. Can't see the bottom. Terrified. Look at that face. Nope, there we go. Morning, what do we do? We can't get across this. Buzzing. Oh, hi. You're the Magnemite we saved. We got word of this. We can rescue Diglett from the sky. Hold on to us tight. Zzz. Don't be scared. We won't make the mistake of zapping you. Buzzing sounds. Oh. No. I lost it. I lost the voice I had before. Oh, I was very scared. Maybe because I was somewhere so high up. My feet feel like they're still walking on air. Feet? He has them. Feet? We kind of just assumed there was a Brock under there. Or just... Standard. This makes no sense. Well, you're safe now. That's what counts. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, you've been rescued. Great, great. 
Huh? What was that? Am I hearing voices again? Before, they told me to commit tax fraud and... Uh, arson. Just to get my tax money back. As well as some insurance. You know, fake my death. Claim the assurance as my long-lost twin brother, Jorge. You know, this, the usual. Whoops, you can't see us. That's terribly rude of us. Hello, Doug Trio here. Oh, Papa. Diglett, you had us worried. You're not hurt? No. It was scary, but I'm all right. It's all thanks to Morning's team. Thank you for everything. You're heroes. You should be thanking our Magnemite friends. This rescue was impossible for us to do on our own. I mean, Morning had the idea of like using the blast seeds we brought with us to blow up part of the mountain so that then it collapsed and filled the hole just enough, but then he looked down and... Yeah, it wasn't the greatest situation. Yeah, just... I, I quickly shut that down. Thankfully, the Magnemite were there. Oh, how rude of us. Thank you so much. No, no. It was the only thing to do. I mean, you're made of three of the same Pokemon. Our evolution is made of the three... E Magnemites. It was... It was just how our evolutions are formed from joint trios. It was a kinship, you see. After all, Pokemon must help each other. I'm impressed. Sincerely, thank you. We must be going. Morning. Kippers. Thank you. Farewell. Okay, 500 Poke. Also, the Petra Scarf and Ginseng. Those were what I was waiting for. Petra Scarf means we can't be poisoned or deadly poisoned. I think it's badly poisoned, but... Monster Hunter has trained me that the level of the poison is deadly poison. We'll be on our way to... Oh wait, don't go away! What is it? Uh... Would you like to join our rescue team? Join your team? Yes! We couldn't have done that last job without you. And... Honestly, having a floating magnet helps a lot. Like, a lot. Steel-type Pokemon hate magnets. And I thought we could need more help for doing rescues in the future. You know, bolster the forces, make a guild, become like a crime syndicate. Except minus the crime, just kind of become a syndicate. Maybe with some crime. Have a lot of outstanding warrants for my arrest here. Morning, do you think so too? Uh, yeah, more members would help, but could could we talk about the whole, uh, crime problem? Nope. I refuse to divulge that part of my past. Except in passing. So how about it? Will you join us as members of our rescue team? Rescue team? That sounds fun. Various buzzing sounds. But if you need us to rush over to rescues, we need somewhere to live close by. Is there anywhere we can live in this area? Um, well, I think there's an abandoned power plant nearby, but we don't own any sort of land rights there. I could easily patch it out in a bit, but it would take a while. Oh, there isn't. No, I just said, ah, never mind. Too bad. Sorry, but we can't join you. See you, various buzzing sounds. And off they trot. Except minus the trot. They kind of just levitate everywhere. That's too bad. Looks like we need to find places for Pokemon to live if we want to join... Uh, if we want to join forces with them. Or them with us. Really depends. Uh, would we become a subsidiary to another rescue team? Will we hold any rights? Would our stock improve? I'll look into this. You get some rest. But... Uh, I've got an idea. Let's go to Pokemon Square tomorrow. There's an interesting place called the Wigglytuff Club. Don't want to know what they do there, but they also have the side service. Trust me, it's perfect for us. And it wasn't open the other day when we went to the square, or the other other days. But it should be open tomorrow, though. I have it on good record that it'll open tomorrow, or else somebody's getting their knees broken. 
It's next door to Felicity Bank. Wigglytuff is usually there every day. We may be able to get some information. Okay, that's what we'll do tomorrow. We'll go to Pokemon Square. Ah, yes. The grand adventure of land ownership, where we get no benefits besides we pay Wigglytuff an extortionate amount of money. All right, not extortionate, exorbitant amount of money, and uh, now own the rights to a bit of land. Huh? Ah. Again? It's the dream again. That Pokemon. Who could it be? Huh? I'm hearing better this time. What? Human. I roll? Wait! Please tell me more! Uh... I can't. Drifting off. And I'm out. I don't try and do a voice for uh, the main player character, but sometimes it just slips through. Also, my nose is, again, a bit stuffed, so... Ah. It wells up at the back of my throat. So, uh, with that, I'm gonna call it apart a bit early. E by about four minutes. But then we get time to go through all the story stuff that's going to happen soon. So, uh, thank you for all, uh, completely bugger that up. Uh, let's try that again. Thank you all for coming down to my neck of the woods. I hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you in the next part. Uh, goodbye.